What's up, you guys? It's Tati, live from my bedroom with the Ring of Honor news. Now, look, I don't even really know where to begin here because there's just some issues going on that don't look great. And when I think about everything, I'm like, this is like all Tony's fault. Like, he's supposed to be a businessman. He's more of a businessman than a, a, a promoter in my eyes. And I feel like he really dropped the ball on some things, especially when it comes to Ring of Honor. Now, um... First thing I think I'm going to discuss here is the ticket sales for Final Battle. Now, I bought my ticket, um, I don't know, it was weeks ago, and I bought it during the pre-sale, tried to get front row, um, but everybody named Mama was trying to get those, so I ended up getting third row, which is all right with me. I'm cool with it. Um, but I felt like maybe there's a lot of people trying to, you know, go see the show. Like, I'm coming from really far just to go see the show because, like I said, I've been covering it every week for pretty much all year and I covered all their pay-per-views from last year which were all awesome and whatnot so I was like okay I'm really excited to go here I don't mind traveling just to go so now here we are it is November 11th and I'm taking a look here at the ticket sales um they set up Ring of Honor Final Battle to be uh 3,722 tickets to be sold um that's the max and they've only sold 800 so far and I'm just like oh that's it. That surprised me, but also didn't surprise me. I was expecting them to say like half the tickets were sold, um, not necessarily 800 of those to be sold. Um, that doesn't look great, but Final Battle is still a little bit more um, a month away from today. So they have some time to get a little bit more people to come in there. But um, definitely doesn't sound good, you know, in terms of ticket sales. However, I'm thinking like, why would that be so? There's several factors as to why those ticket sales are really low. And one of them being um, the booking is one thing. And it's a subscription-based thing where you have to pay uh, to watch the show. You know, I don't know what they do in terms of how many people is um, buying the subscription on a monthly basis. Honestly, I don't know. All I know is that they're taking my money and that's all I know. Um... But then there's something else that came up, though. Tony Khan, last year, Forbidden Door, um, somebody came up to him. Was it Forbidden Door? Whatever. One of the pay-per-views last year. Somebody from the CW Network, one of their executive producers, had um, came over there to give an offer for Ring of Honor um, in terms of them um, airing Ring of Honor on their network. Tony Khan, they didn't even want to entertain it. And I'm just like okay i don't understand why he wants to keep ring of honor and aew in under the same umbrella and he wants them to be with warner brothers and i get it you you want all your product to be under the same thing and, and whatnot however warner brothers are not interested they they're not interested in ring of honor matter of fact since you were approached um by that executive producer they have since um warner brothers have since had collision so now it's like, eh, we're not interested in Ring of Honor, but we could take another show from you guys, put it on Saturday night. Now, I love Collision. I think it's great and whatnot. I think it was a great idea. I'm not feeling the Saturday night thing, but since I got nothing to do on Saturday night, I don't mind. However, they're not interested in Ring of Honor. So you had someone who contacted you, uh, who not just contact, but his ass came over there to make an offer and you didn't want to take it because you want all your stuff with Warner Brothers. What you should have done, since you see that uh, Warner Brothers is not interested in Ring of Honor, at least at this point, is you could have made a deal with the CW and maybe a short term, maybe one year, two years. I probably would have did two years. And during that time, build up Ring of Honor to be something really, really special where Warner Brothers would have to be like, at the end of your two-year contract with CW, would have been like, hey, Tony, we're putting this much for Ring of Honor to be over here with us. And that would have been the best case scenario because you gotta start from the bottom up. You're already expecting Warner Brothers to take um, uh, Ring of Honor when they're not interested. And another thing too is CW is not a cable network, which means more people have access to uh, the CW than cable itself. But for who is watching cable, you know? Like, I watch um, AEW, but I have Sling TV. That's not even cable. That's still under um, internet. And it's like, 
most people don't really care about that. People want to use streaming devices and all this stuff and don't really care about the whole cable thing. So you could have been on a non-cable network and more people would have been able to have eyes on your show and things would have been great. But guess what? Since then, we just now got that news a couple of days ago that NXT is going to be on CW in 2024. And that's going to be absolutely amazing because their ratings are going to skyrocket for the same fucking reasons that I just said that, you know, with them being on a non-cable um, network, more people will be able to watch. And I hear it all the time. Oh, well, I don't watch wrestling because I don't have cable. You know how many times I hear that? Tony Khan just dropped the fucking ball without taking that offer because more people wouldn't have been able to watch the show. Now, watch NXT ratings be way better than it has been on the USA Network because more people can see it. And it's a great show anyway, and more people is going to be able to enjoy it. So definitely, the WWE did not look at the CW being some kind of demotion or something like that. There wasn't too good for the CW and it took their offer whatever it was made a deal and that's where they're going to be next year and I just feel like damn Tony Khan they're not going to take you we're not even going to talk about the NWA situation that's going on right now that's another thing and at this point um he ruined that WWE is definitely not going to want to be on the same network with their rival promotion so th that offer is off the table off the table and just poof went away and now it would literally take another network, another non-cable network to make that deal that, um, you know, would also be just as great. I don't know what's going on with Tony. Like, you're, you're supposed to be a businessman. Well, I look at him more of a businessman than a promoter. And I still feel like, damn, and you just, like, didn't make the right call? Not good, Tony. So, you know, with a new year approaching, I don't really know, like, what they can do to really make things better. Tony Khan, you can give me a call. I could probably help you out. Um, I'm looking at their website, ringofhonor.com, and it's been updated, and it shows the Ring of Honor uh, roster. So, you know, Eddie Kingston on there as the world um, champion, uh, Athena, women's world champion, Shabbat up here, champion, and obviously the TV title is vacant, so that says vacant. MJF, Adam Cole, still tag champions for God knows what reason. Mogul Embassy, six-man tag champs. And then they go on and they show the, um, the roster. So aside from everyone else that I just said on who's on the roster, um, they put Cash Wheeler, Chris Jericho, Claudio Castagnoli, Dalton Castle, Daniel Garcia, Dax Harwood, Jay Briscoe, rest in peace, uh, Mark Briscoe, Mercedes Martinez, Samoa Joe, The Boys, and Willa Yuta. Those are the only people on the fucking roster. Obviously, there's more people who's performing, but like I said, the website has been updated in the last two days or so. So that's all you promoting for who's on your roster and you want people to fucking watch? Um... I've seen some really great things from Ring of Honor this year. Um, some of my favorite matches was actually on the show, not even just the pay-per-view. And I feel like a lot of people just don't get a chance to even know what's going on over there. AEW obviously being bigger than Ring of Honor right now, they don't even promote Ring of Honor. Matter of fact, all they do is just take their titles so that the people over there can have access to more titles. But these people won't even come on Ring of Honor and defend those things, which I think is an absolutely horrible idea because it does nothing for Ring of Honor. Has the subscriptions gone up since um, the Young Bucks and Paige won it? Absolutely not. Um, since um, MJF and um, Cole got it, maybe it went up because people were hoping to see these two guys on the show, but they never, ever went over there. Um, Samoa Joe, he's had it since, like, damn near the beginning, so that doesn't even mean anything, but it's just like, okay, so you're doing these type of moves with the titles for Ring of Honor, kind of showing that it doesn't really matter um, what's going on in Ring of Honor, we'll just take those titles so that it can be more bling bling on AEW TV. And I'm just like, what, what is this, Tony? What, why does this even make sense to you or anyone else who's even listening to your ideas back there? Um, what happened the other night with Samoa Joe was absolutely the worst thing that they could have done in terms of 
trying to show people why they should even buy fucking Ring of Honor. You know, if you are, you have a champion over there and let's, he's been dominant. Yes, he has. But lately he's been there less and less. And I'm not going to trip on that or whatever, because when he does come and have matches, he does his thing and I'm cool with it. However, I thought um, having Samoa Joe being part of the storyline with MJF and having some matches on Collision and stuff, I thought that was going to help um, bring more people over there because he kept putting the TV title on the line. However, it did really nothing in terms of Ring of Honor. You know, all we know is that Ring of Honor exists because somebody from Ring of Honor is coming over here with a title and he's putting it on the line but keeps winning, right? And it doesn't really does anything for people to come and watch Ring of Honor. So now... Here's Samoa Joe, who's obviously been saying he has his eyes out on a Triple B, and he wants it. Why couldn't he keep the TV title, but also go for the Triple B? That's what he was already doing before. So now what he felt like he's bored and he should just vacate the title. And then when he just lays it down on the ring, it puts all the value down. And I was just like, no, 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 not like this. First of all, what was wrong with Keith Lee taking the title? I understand. You want Samoa Joe to look good going into the um, uh, you know main title picture in um, WWE. I get it. So maybe you didn't want him to lose. Why not fake a fucking injury? Why not um, do something where it didn't come to the point that he had to vacate it like that, which put the value down of this title, which is just absolutely insane. And now Tony Khan talking about, well, we haven't... Uh, an, an announcement about um, the TV title. What? Well, what? This doesn't make any sense. Anyway, there's like a lot of bad things going on here in terms of making decisions. Tony Khan, he always say on Ring of Honor, the final decision is mine to make. Okay, bro, make some good decisions and more people will watch. And that's the issue. Now, had he had taken that offer from the CW uh, executive producer... Um, Ring of Honor would have already been airing. They would have had way better views than what they have right now. I'm pretty sure of it. Absolutely. I don't know what time it would have come on, but they would have done much better over there. Better than what they're doing right now. They would have had better ticket sales for this pay-per-view and other pay-per-view so far this year. Um, and WWE would have never been able to make that deal with the CW. There was no way. They would have been like, what? AEW got something going on over there? No, no, no. We, we're not coming over. You know? I get that from a business standpoint, from another promotion. But Tony could have taken that opportunity, and for whatever reason, he just didn't. And it, it just doesn't look good. Ring of Honor would have been much more successful right now had he made better decisions. Now, I did tell people that, you know, go ahead and purchase your subscription because the pay-per-view is going to be part of the, of the subscription uh, for next month. And I still believe that it's not a, um, a bad thing to purchase anyway. It's $9.99. If you got it, go ahead and check it out because they do have some good stuff. Um, if you're not really sure about it and you purchase it, t check out the pay-per-views they had last year. Check out the pay-per-views they had this year. They're phenomenal, you know. Um, let's not get it twisted. They do have really great wrestlers over there who have been giving their all and giving us some really great unforgettable matches. However, the platform that they're on, the lack of marketing within AEW for Ring of Honor, um, and the fact that they're not on some type of network to give that exposure, those type of things it makes me really worried about Ring of Honor future moving forward. And I really do hope that Tony could just fucking wake up and say, either I can't handle this shit, let me, let me get someone else that can, or just um, make better decisions. And I think that, like I said before, he has all the right tools. He got all the right people over there. But because he feels like he'd have had honcho up in there, that everything has to be his way or no way, this is the reason why uh, Ring of Honor probably don't even have another two years. And that would be really unfortunate if that happens. So, Tony, the time to wake up was yesterday. Guys, thanks so much for watching my video. I'll be back with more Collision later on and obviously Rampage that I forgot to do.